Chairman, this is Emma Code, meeting producer. I can confirm that the live stream has now started. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to this virtual meeting of the West Sub Area Planning Committee. Uh, before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting has been live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I'll adjourn for a short period to try and re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I'll remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken by roll call of committee members by the Democratic officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they'll be joining the meeting by telephone. Where members has declared a non registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicate by using the raise your hand function, which is being monitored by the vice chairman. Any members not on the committee or unable to use the raise your hand function who wish to ask a question should indicate by typing an X in the chat box. Before we start today's business, I'll ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask committee members to confirm that they are present and state their electoral division. Uh, thank you, Chairman Angela Saunders, Democratic Services. I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, yes, uh, good morning again. It's um, Roger Harding, Newly Mosel Division. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Good morning, uh, John Bastin, Councillor for Constantine, Mornan and Budok. Councillor Big. Uh, good morning, David Biggs, Councillor for Campbell Triswithian. Councillor Code. Good morning, Graham Code, Councillor for Hale South. Councillor Duffin. Good morning, Councillor Duffin, Councillor from uh, Mount Hawk and Portreath Division. Councillor Eakin Smith. Good morning, Councillor David Eakin Smith, uh, Councillor for Eluggan and Vice Chairman. Councillor Hurd. Good morning, Councillor John Hurd, Member for Camborne Pendarvis Division. Thank you. Councillor Katchmarek. Councillor Mark Katchmarek, Councillor for Aharic, <coughs> Gwanet and St Day Division. Councillor Martin. Good morning, <coughs> Councillor John Martin, Helston South. Councillor Nicholas. Good morning, uh, Councillor Sue Nicholas. Member for Marazine and Peronethno Division. Thank you. Uh, we do have Councillor Lionel Pascoe today, but he's having a small technical issue at the moment. Um, he'll be back when he's able. He's from Gwynir, Gwydion and St Earth Division. Uh, Councillor Robinson. Uh, Richard Robinson, Cornwall Councillor for St Dives East. Councillor John Thomas. Good morning, everybody. Cornwall Councillor John Thomas, Lanner and Stithians, the Electoral Division. Thank you. Councillor Mike Thomas. Good morning, and Councillor Mike Thomas from Helston, Helston North. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. I'll just confirm which officers are in attendance today. Obviously, there's myself, Angela Saunders. I'm the committee's clerk. We have Mark Broomhead, Mark Ball, Peter Gregory and Hannah England from Planning, Ben Kerno from Legal, Nikki Manell from Affordable Housing, Hugh Gibbon and Robin Watson from Highways and Emma Code Democratic Services is the meeting producer today. Thank you. Right, thank you, Angela. Uh, agenda item one, are there any apologies? Yes, I've had apologies from Councillor Hendry. Thank you. Uh, no further apologies. No. So we go on to agenda item two, that's declaration of interest. Are, are there any declarations of interest? <coughs> No, it doesn't appear to be. 
Uh, right, so with that, we go on to agenda item three. That's the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, if, if we, <coughs> uh, uh, we need to prove that uh, they are a true and correct record. So they're on pages one to seven. So I'll go through it um, page by page and then I'll ask for a proposal and seconder. So page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, and page seven. Yeah, right, so if somebody would like to move that and some and the seconder. Move it, Chairman. Yeah, so, so, so um, Councillor John Thomas and the seconder. Second, Mike Thomas. Yeah, Councillor Mike, right, thank you very much. So um, all, all those in favour, um, if you'd show with your um, hand, hands up facility uh, that if you're in favour of that, Anyone against? Any abstentions? You okay with that, Angela? Yes, that's um, a majority. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Right, we, we go on to agenda item four, which that's applications for consideration in today's business. And the first one is 41, which that's PA 20 forward slash 01196. RJ Walker, land at College Farm, College Hill, Penryn, and that's on pages 8 to 52. And I think, um, Mark, Mark, are you there, Mark Paul? Yes, Chairman, I am. Yeah, so um, if you can just, um, you're going to share a screen with us, so if we can <coughs> just check that first. Doing that now. Yeah, we can see that. So, so over to you, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. This application seeks reserve matters approval for a scheme of 121 dwellings, public open space, play space, associated infrastructure, including retaining structures and works of the highway, internal access, parking, servicing and landscaping. The reserve matters for which approval is sought are layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. Outline permission for up to 150 dwellings was approved in 2017. This scheme forms part of that outline permission. Access was approved as part of the outline permission. The site is allocated for development in the Cornwall Council Site Allocations DPD. The issues, the key issues that need to be considered in assessing this application are the suitability of the layout, scale, appearance and landscaping in respective impact on the character of the area internal highway and access arrangements, affordable homes, public open space, potential impacts upon neighbour amenity, historic environment issues, ecology including biodiversity net gain and potential impacts upon ancient woodland. So the application site is situated to the south of Penryn and is divided into three separate parcels. So on the screen here the main uh, centre of Penryn is here and the edge of Falmouth is down here in the bottom right. The three parcels of the land are the main application site where the dwellings will be sited is this area here and it's situated between the A39 Penryn bypass which is the green road you can see here and the Falmouth Detroit railway line which runs along here. The land slopes down from south to north and overlooks the town and that's where the houses would be sited. The other two parcels of land are these two here hatched uh, these are both wooded areas in the valley and those will be given over as public open space. There'll be no uh, no development taking place in those areas. The development is confined to this part of the site here. Perrin Town Council is currently in discussions with the applicant regarding taking on these areas here to manage those you know, on an ongoing basis as public open space um, and that would be land that hopefully will be transferred to the Town Council and discussions are at an advanced stage regarding that transfer. The screen shows some of the important constraints um, we have here to the application site where the houses will be built is here and these are the two areas of open space. We have a grade two listed Penryn viaduct here and the, and the piers of the older viaduct. So those are listed buildings that are within the setting of the site. Um, and then we have tree preservation orders applying in the woodland here and along College Hill here. And you can see that the closest listed building is over here. Uh, we have a scheduled ancient monument 
Glasgow College there, um, but these are all uh, significantly far away from the site to so not be directly impacted. And the Penryn Conservation Area uh, is in the centre of Penryn along here, but it does not, doesn't fall within the application site. And this next slide shows the designation of ancient woodland in blue. Um, this is uh, this Natural England decided to designate this uh, ancient woodland during the course of the determination of the application. Um, for the sake of clarity, um, the houses, the closest to the houses would be in this part of in this field here. So there's no physical impact upon the ancient woodland. Uh, the houses are far enough away from the site. Um, you'll see on the layout plan in a moment that there is a pedestrian and cycle link that will be provided in here. That's the closest part of the development to come to the site, uh, although that wouldn't be wouldn't fall within the um, uh, ancient woodland, so there'd be no direct impact on that. Uh, but part of the, the these areas here uh, do fall within the application site, and that's part of the land to be transferred to the uh, or for open space, I should say, that will eventually hopefully be transferred to the town council. Um, but again, there'll be no physical impact upon that because uh, it's out. There's no development taking place in those areas. So here, this just gives an aerial shot uh, of the site, so we can see it in relationship to, the, to Penryn. Um, you can see at the moment that where the houses will be built comprises agricultural fields separated by hedgerows with some trees. We can see the Penryn bypass running along the south here. There's the Falmouth of Truro branch line running along there. And you can see that the open space areas here are, are, are largely heavily wooded. So we have the main built up area of Penryn here, which is to the north of the railway line. And this is the allocation as well, which um, uh, so this, this area here was, is the allocation in the Cornwall site allocations um, development plan document, uh, which allocates this site for 150 houses. Now this is the master plan showing the layout of the development. Um, so again, for orientation's sake, this is the uh, A39 Penryn Bypass. This is Hillhead Road here. There's the railway line, and we have the existing built development of Penryn here. So the main access, which was approved at the time the outline application was considered, uh, is in this position here onto Hillhead. So that's the main vehicular and pedestrian access. There will be another access that runs out of this end of the site here. This shows the continuation here. This runs off in this direction, uh, which then provides a pedestrian and cycle link onto College Hill in this position here. That gives an alternative option for accessing um, the public highway around the site. The houses are arranged largely following the contours of the site because the land slopes downwards to the north. Um, so to avoid large amounts of cut and fill and to make it easier to develop on the site, um, the roads and the uh, houses fall, generally follow the contours, so that's the, it slopes steeply downwards. Public open space is divided into separate areas. We have a larger area here um, for public access, another area in this position here. Oh, sorry, jumped ahead. Uh, and then we have other areas around here. Most of the hedgerows and trees would be retained. There would inevitably have to be some removed, um, but there are uh, in order to accommodate the development. Um, but there is an additional 200 meters of hedgerow being uh, replaced uh, above and beyond what's already being what's being lost as part of the development. We have proposed tree screening in this position along here uh, on the A39 because this there's quite a weak boundary here at the moment. There's or trees along this part of the road, but there's quite a weak gap in this position here. So this would provide additional screening along here, uh, which would reduce views across uh, across the site uh, to hide the dwellings. Parking would be provided for two spaces per dwelling. Um, there's 35% affordable housing achieved across the site, which can, um, co complies with the outline permission. I'll just quickly move through these. Uh, these are just some examples of some of the house types um, and how they would be, uh, how they would appear. Um, there's a large variety of house types. So I haven't included all of them here because there's, um, there's just too many to show. Um, but you can see that uh, dwellings are largely these. This example here is split level, so it's two stories fronting the road, uh, three stories to the rear to to achieve that uh, uh, or to respect the the slope across the site. So from the public facing areas you'd see two storey properties and into the rear gardens you would, you would tend to see the three storeys. The three storeys are kept at the lower parts of the site generally in order to um, uh, avoid um, any, uh, any sort of excessive landscape impact. Another example of a split level one there. And then two storey property at the bottom there you can see. Okay, so there's traditional designs, we've got chimneys, we've got pitch roofs, we've got um, uh, materials including painted render, 
Um, this, this shows some of the different colors here. We've got cladding, timber cladding, we've got slate hanging, painted render, natural stone. Um, so you can see it has a fairly traditional appearance. The bottom uh, ropes, a couple of terraces along here, um, which shows that sort of general traditional appearance of dwellings, which is appropriate for the character of the area. Um, and this gives an indication of the sort of colors, uh, sort of color schemes that you, you would see there. Um, but it's a, uh, the design and appearance is considered to be good quality. And this is just some example street scenes. So you can see that um, uh, dwellings are the, the, the arranged to follow the contours. Um, there's a good variety of house types uh, and the, the taller properties, as I say, it's, these are largely facing onto um, the, the, the rows and then the, the, the taller elements tend to uh, face onto the gardens at the rear. Now, these are quite useful aerial views of the site. So looking at the top one here, we can see for orientation purposes, here's the A39 Pemberton Bypass, the railway line here with the viaduct in the distance. We have a uh, hill head running down here. So the site access would be approximately in this position here. Um, and developments taking place in the, these two fields here, these fields here, and this field around here. The tree screening belt will be along here to reinforce this boundary. So you can see already there's a good, good tree screening along here and that will continue that along there in order to um, restrict views from the A39 across the site. There's good separation between the nearest neighbouring properties, which are these ones here on Bronescombe um, Close, and uh, there will be no impacts there. Um, properties are generally about approximately about 40, 38 to 40 metres away at the closest, and so there's good separation there, and they're separated by the railway and uh, the tree, existing trees that are along the embankments as well. At the bottom here, this is the view looking south, so again the application site is over here. So you can see it's on the slope, but it's on the um, uh, on the reverse slope. So it doesn't the development isn't skyline. So uh, you'll still view it against the backdrop of the rising land to the rear. I'll just quickly run through the rest of the photos. This is taken from adjacent to the A39 by the um, uh, lay by at the bottom of the A39, if you're familiar with that, looking across the site. So the tree screen planting will be in front of us here and then development will be taking place behind that beyond this hedge here, the lower field. The zone will be in these fields here. You can see Penryn in the background there in the valley. And this is just a view at the bottom end of the site. Uh, this is where the proposed um, cycle link and access will be. So you can see the ancient woodland in the background up here, which has recently been designated as such. Uh, and the cycle and pedestrian link will be running along here. So it won't be impacting upon that woodland. Um, but this is the link onto College Hill at the bottom. Now this shot shows the view from Chandler Park, a uh, new, new estate which has uh, recently been completed on the opposite side of the valley. So the application site, these brown fields you can see in here. So you can see the, a, the A39 bypass runs along there behind that, uh, that row of trees there. So development takes place down here. So it in, the, in these views here from this position, uh, you'd see the rising land behind. So it wouldn't, you wouldn't, be, um, you wouldn't be skylined against that development, uh, against the uh, sky there at all. So development would be down in this position down here. And finally, that just shows Hill Head uh, taken from the proposed access, which was approved at the outline stage, looking up the hill towards um, Falmouth in that direction and down the hill under the railway bridge towards Penryn in that direction. So finally, the balance of considerations are set out on the screen there. Um, it's a reserve matters application which seeks approval for layout, scale, appearance and landscaping for 121 dwellings. Um, the scheme is considered to respond positively to the constraints of the site and the layout, scale and appearance and landscaping is considered to be good quality. The scheme will be appropriate in terms of the character of the area and will ensure that any visual impact will be minimised. Um, so the affordable homes and public open space meet the requirements of the outline permission and those are an important benefit of the scheme. Uh, there will be some limited harm to the setting of nearby heritage assets, uh, which, which in this case is the uh, viaduct and the uh, uh, conservation area, although those those harms are judged to be less than, than um, significant and they would, um, or less than substantial I should say, and they are judged to outweigh the harm, uh, the benefits are judged to outweigh that harm. Uh, there will be no material adverse impacts upon the amenities of either existing or prospective occupiers. Uh, the scheme would ensure that any adverse impacts upon ecology would be adequately mitigated and a biodiversity net gain would be achieved and there'll be no adverse impacts upon the designated ancient woodland. So the recommendation removes to, uh, remains to approve permission subject to conditions. Now finally, I'll just draw members' attention to the update. Uh, you'll see on page one, 
of the update sheets um, that the applicant has requested a slight modification to the condition two in the recommendation just to ensure that the requirement to submit details is linked up with the phasing of the schemes. So they don't have to submit everything in one go. It's submitted in accordance with each phase of the development. So we consider that to be an appropriate and sensible amendment to the condition. So that's included at the end of the recommendation on this update sheet. And you'll see there finally a comment from uh, the divisional member, John Bastin CC, regarding uh, the concerns regarding public safety, uh, pedestrian safety on the uh, uh, on the road into Penryn. Um, uh, this issue was dealt with at the outline application stage and highway improvements were secured as part of that. So there are additional highway works, including additional footway provision, uh, traffic car and traffic harming measures uh, on Hill Head down into Penryn. Um, and that was secured by planning conditions. So those would be secured as part of the development. And the highways officer has commented in the main report that the uh, it considers there would be a, a safe and suitable access provided to, uh, to to serve the development. So there we are. So the recommendation remains to approve permission subjects to conditions are set out in the main report and the amended condition to are set out in the update sheet. Thank you, Chairman. All right. Uh, thank you, Mark, for that detailed report. Uh, we, we have got speakers and the first speaker is Mr. Rory Force. Um, are, are you there, Mr. Force? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, good, good morning, Mr. Force. Uh, the way it will go, you'll have three minutes uh, when you're comfortable and you start speaking, and we'll give you a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go. So over to you. OK, I'll start now. The National Planning Policy Framework, paragraph 124, reminds us that the creation of high quality buildings and places is fundamental to what the planning and development process should achieve. The ethos of the National Planning Policy Framework is reinforced by the various policies detailed in the Cornwall Local Plan. I, along with the majority of residents in Penryn, as evidenced by in excess of 220 comments on the planning portal, object to this application for several reasons, some of which I'll now highlight. Firstly, this reserve matters application does not amount to high quality buildings, nor do they pay sufficient regard to visual and landscape impacts. Secondly, there is no evidence of future proofing with any form of sustainable design. And thirdly, pedestrian and cycle routes proposed are unsafe and inadequate given the scale of development in the area. For these reasons alone, the application is clearly in breach of Cornwall Local Plan policies 2, 12 and 23. Firstly, discussing the requirements for high quality buildings and visual impact. A scheme of 121 dwellings should have a detailed analysis of the local area. Instead, the design and access statement only dedicates one page to the reasons for the appearance of the proposed properties with some superficial text. In summary, the applicant proposes using garish painted render and timber cladding on his properties. Whilst painted render is visible in Penryn, I've lived in the area all my life and within historic Penryn I've only witnessed gentle colours of render on shop fronts. The vast majority of residential properties are finished in local stone. Additionally, very few residential properties use any cladding, so the intention to use painted timber cladding is strongly against historical precedents in Penryn. This proposal is generic and would be more fitting in a seaside resort rather than acknowledging the unique history of Penryn. The negative visual impact is even acknowledged in the applicant's documentation with the, and I quote, picturesque views of the estuary blocked from the A39 by this development. Secondly, detailing future proofing and sustainability, there is no evidence of the applicant going beyond his minimum requirements detailed by the Code for Sustainable Homes. The consideration of electric charging points, solar energy and rainwater harvesting would show acknowledgement of the climate emergency. Instead, the design and access statement details the possibility of wood-burning stoves known for pollution and inefficiency. Thirdly, detailing pedestrian and cycle routes. The highways assessment was conducted prior to the substantial increase in road utilisation in the area left. resulting from the multitude of developments. The pedestrian route down Hillhead requires people to walk for over 100 metres on a busy road with no footway. This concern has been cited by residents and parish councils but remains unresolved. The cycle route is a white elephant as it proceeds westerly onto College Hill, neither towards Falmouth nor Penryn, and as such will remain almost entirely unused. This development is mediocre, poor quality and placeless, and I urge the committee to reject the application. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Forster. If, if you could just wait a moment, just see if we've got any questions from the members. Uh, are there any questions, David? Sorry, sir, I'm trying to unmute. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. 
Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Force. Um, right. You. The, the, the um, the design access statement details the possibility of returning to pollution and inefficiency. Hello? If you could sign off, I think that would be the answer. I think we're picking up the recording. Sorry, what do you want me to do? Sign in again? If, if you hang up, I think that, that would probably cure it. Okay. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Force. Right. Thank you. So with that, we go on to uh, the next speaker is Councillor John Langan from Penryn Town Council. Uh, are you there, Councillor? Uh, Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. Uh, sorry, that was Councillor Langan on the phone. He's just going to redial in, I believe. Uh, right. Thank you. Um, it's Angela, so Democratic Services. I recommend we go on to the next speaker. If he's there. Well, that, that's Mr Scott. Mr. Scoot, yeah, while we're waiting sorry. for Councillor Langan to call back in. Yeah, right, sorry. Um, right. Uh, Mr. Scoot, are you there? I am, yes, yeah. Yeah, um, right, good, good morning. So, sorry about the okay. mess around, but um, it'll be the normal format. You've got three minutes, and we'll give you a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go. Okay, I'll turn my computer off. So, can you give me a prompt on the phone rather than. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll be a prompt on the phone. OK, well, let me know when I'm on then. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so whenever you're ready, you, as I say, it'll be three minutes. We'll give you a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go. OK, thank you very much. Good morning and thank you for letting me address you today. My name is Mark Scoot. I am agent for the scheme and also promoted the site in the Cornwall Site Allocations DPD and through the outline application process resulting in its consent. I would like to start by thanking the case officer for his work on the application at this very challenging time and for preparing the report that considers all matters and representations in great detail. Taking full account of all matters, the officer recommends approval of the application. You have seen reference in the officer's report and heard today of a number of objections to the scheme. None of these have any basis to be sustained and there are no objections from any of the statutory consultees, all of whom support the application. The time to object to the principle of developing the site is long gone. The site was promoted by Cornwall Council with the support of Penryn Town Council and Bewdock Parish in the site allocations DPD. This was tested at independence examination and found to be acceptable. The development plan allocates the site exactly for the uses proposed. The site has outlined planning consent and already has a detailed consent for the means of access, which includes a pedestrian and cycle route. The highways officer has confirmed that the proposed pedestrian and cycle route meets all policy requirements. This is confirmed at paragraph 68, 109 and 110 of the report before you. At the time of determining the outline scheme, there were a number of objections and these were fully considered by the council case officer. Both Budock Parish and Penryn Town Council supported the application and it was approved by Cornwall Council. Penryn Town Council has raised an objection to some aspects of the scheme and whilst these are all valid considerations, they have all been fully addressed in the scheme design and supported by the relevant technical consultees in providing their responses to Cornwall Council. Each of these issues is fully considered in the officer report before you. The scheme will deliver much needed marks in affordable housing at a time when there was a critical need for affordable housing in the area as recognised by your specialist officers. The dedication of six acres of woodland in open space in addition to the open space on site and the passing of ownership to Penryn Town Council, which has their full support, will deliver a permanent benefit for residents and visitors in the area and provide significantly more open space than is required by the development plan. Contrary to what the objector has just said, the scheme will provide electric charging points throughout the development. In conclusion, this application is entirely in accordance with the development plan and benefits from outline consent. All the concerns of objectors are fully addressed and I therefore respectfully request that it is approved today. Thank you. Right, uh, if you could just hang on a minute, Mr Scoot. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, are, are there any questions for Mr. Scoot from any of the members? Over to you, David. No, I don't see any questions, Chairman. Right, thank you. Um, right, uh, Angela, are we in uh, contact with Councillor Langan again, are we? Yeah, I can see he's waiting in the lobby. Yeah. Yeah. Emma's just admitted him. We can see another background noise. Oh, right. Yeah, that's um, Councillor Langan. He needs to turn off his um, live stream. Yeah. Uh, good, good morning. Is that Councillor Langan? Yeah, sorry, I can, I'm just, <laughs> I've just turned it off. Yeah. 
Uh, right, that, that's fine. Good, good, good morning. Um, the usual format, uh, Councillor, we've got three minutes and we'll give you a prompt when you've got 30 seconds to go. So over right. to you. All right, sir. Uh, I represent, I, John Langan is my name, I'm, I'm the uh, chair of um, the Cornwall, uh, the planning committee for Penryn. Basically our, our, our comments are much the same as the first speaker. Um, we would uh, like to see much more use of natural materials in, in the construction of the, of the dwellings, uh, a more muted colour scheme, and if possible a reduction in the height of the three storey buildings. Um, there is no reference at all to um, low carbon uh, construction and or uh, solar power etc. So the council would also uh, like to see the inclusion of solar panels and appropriate renewable energy sources uh, in the design and in the construction of the properties. Uh, the town council will request that as much of the Cornish hedges are retained as possible the project should be fully assessed for the impact on the College Valley and the protection of the area within College Valley as local green space is provided. Uh, the Town Council is unable to support the development until a formalised plan is in place with regard to the uh, public open space. We've been told that the, um, or we're in the process of negotiating uh, the, the, the lower part of the valley uh, to, to be given to the town, um, but there's much yet to be decided. And finally, and I think the most important part is that the uh, the, the traffic, the additional traffic that's going to be put onto uh, College Hill is going to be quite enormous. There's a potential for 250 additional cars, plus all the deliveries and all the white bands and everything else that's up and down there. It's a horrible road as we speak. Uh, there's traffic calming measures I, I talked about and additional pedestrianisation but it really is going to make a horrible road a lot worse. And I would imagine very, very dangerous in the future. Thank you. Right, uh, thank you, Axel. If you could just hang on, just in case any of the members have got any questions for you. Um, are, are there any, David? Uh, none that I can see, Jim. Right. No. Nope. E easy run to say. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance, Councillor Langan. And that, that's uh, the end of it. All right. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, right, uh, we, we've got three divisional members that are affected by this application. I, I know Councillor Mary May is there. Uh, Councillor May, are you ready to speak? I am, Chairman, thank you. Yeah, it will be sort of at five minutes, we'll be asking you if, if you could um, actually wind up if you get that far. So anyway, over to you, Councillor, good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning members, thank you Chairman for allowing me to speak this morning and firstly I want to set the scene. Today I'm representing the 220 residents who mostly back in April, just after the site notice was put up, hit the planning portal big time to object to the application before you today. Their, their objections mainly focus on the impact on the valley from, the very contra from this very controversial site. The site was identified back in 2012-13, along with another site at Trelaswell, adjoining parish and town councils met at length to discuss these growth areas to meet targets for housing identified in the emerging Cornwall local plan. Trelaswell, due to the massive flooding problems that could significantly impact on Penryn, was not the preferred option. However, the Budok site was also contentious due to development in the valley, which constituted three of the lower fields. After much negotiation with officers, the three fields were pulled from the site allocation. The Hillhead site lies in the parish of Budok. However, with a recent boundary review yet to be finalised, after negotiating with Budok Parish Council, Budok very kindly offered Penryn this area. Needless to say, Penryn Town Council have duly accepted Budok's very kind offer. When the application came forward 20, 2014, the three lower fields in the valley were still part of the 150 dwellings. However, 
Again, after much negotiation, the applicant withdrew the three fields, hence the lower number of homes before you today. Being mindful that the remaining 29 can come back as reserve matters another time. Glasney Valley is much loved by older and younger residents and students in particular spend much time walking, cycling and running. During lockdown, a lot of people fell in love with the valley as their own piece of sanctuary, seeking, soaking up this green lung of the town. In the 220 objections, residents are deeply concerned from pollution from the site and runoff into the valley. Light, news and light noise and water affecting flora, fauna and the wildlife in particular, causing significant uh, harm to the recently designated ancient woodland. Pages 28 to 33 encompass the um, number of objections that residents have raised on the portal. I won't repeat them. The conservation officer refers in length, page 21, to the Cornwall Design Guide, referencing designs of building. Page 22, external material specification. He also questions if the density of dwelling space site area is appropriate for this site. Natural England raised concerns refigures within habitat regulation assessment, page 24. They question the net gain biodiversity, re-ruling spring statement 2019 on new developments. Ancient Woodland, page 25, second paragraph C. Development resulting in loss or deterioration of irreplaceable habitats should be refused. No explanation being given on further energy savings policy 2 and 12 of the Cornell, Cornell Local Plan. Residents are aware of the visual impact of this elevated site on the conservation area of Penryn. Palette of colour is not addressed. The application doesn't accord with policy 24 four of the Cornwall Local Plan. Policy 23, development does not conserve or enhance biodiversity. Palette of colours used not, do not reflect the hillside location. Finally, page 11.4, planning officer acknowledges harm to the setting of nearby heritage assets. However, I realise that the principle of development has been approved. And thank you for me allowing me to speak today. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor May. Um, are, are there any questions for Councillor May? Over to you, David. No, Chairman. Uh, has Councillor Sunak has she got her hand in the air? Uh, yes, I have. I was just going to ask um, <coughs> Councillor May, um, do you know if there's been any um, investigations into protected wildlife species such as plants or anything? Yeah, I think the applicant has done um, two uh, reports on, on species, um, fauna, flora and wildlife. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, were there any other questions there? I'm sorry to miss that one, Chairman. Uh, no. no. Ah, oh, that's gold. Sue, Sue's waving to me, I think. But, yeah. <laughs> no. No, right, she's taking it down. Right, but with that, it's, um, I think the next one is, is Councillor Simons with us today. Um, it's Angela from Democratic Services. No, he isn't. No, OK. So, um, um, Councillor John Bastin. Good morning, Chair. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah. Good morning, John. Be, morning. We'll, if, if we get the five minutes, you know, we'll give you a prompt and ask you to wind up at that stage. <laughs> right, thanks. No, I, I shouldn't be too long. I, I, I empathise with a lot of what Mary has said, but again, underline the fact that there's already as outlined planning this site. Um, my big concern, well, two concerns really, page 21, um, there was no actual report from a tree officer about any other site. And I think that was really a, a big loss because 
yes, okay, the, the ancient woodland is slightly off site, but the rest of the site could also have done with an evaluation. So I don't know quite where we stand with that or, or, or why it never happened. But the real big problem, as uh, Mark Ball's already said, as far as I'm concerned, is highways. Hillhead is quite a narrow road. It feeds into Penryn and Falmouth, but there are three other developments occurring on that same road. And what really worries me is the volume of traffic that will suddenly be on that road. And I know, again, the access has got permission on the outline side, but I'm just wondering whether we can do anything else with that to try and improve the safety, bearing in mind there's no pavement from the site down into Penryn. And a lot of these affordable homes would presumably will be to, to younger parents. And a lot of children will be moving up and down what is already quite a dangerous road. So that's my big concern. I don't know quite how we can debate that or whether Hugh can add any extras to that. And finally, going back to something Mary said, I must admit I would prefer slate to cladding. Um, uh, I, I have a feeling that cladding is very trendy these days, but I'm not too sure what its longevity is as far as design goes. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Roger, thank you. All right, uh, thank you, John. Um, were, were there any questions from members for Councillor Bastin? Uh, over to you, David. No, Chairman. No, OK. Right, thank you very much. Um, right, so we now go on. Are, are there any questions from the committee members of any of the officers? David again. Uh, don't appear to be chairman, no. Uh, wait a minute, I think they're coming in now. Ah, oh, yeah, the yeah it's, slow uh, motion probably. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's quite a few got yeah, there. Joy Stu uh, Councillor yeah. Duffin. Yeah, right, F first one over to Councillor Duffin. Thank you. Um, I just want to raise the points um, to the officers that John Bastin, Councillor, made. Um, I'd like to ask um, the planning officer about the slate because someone else commented on slate roof tiles and Councillor Bastin has commented on slate instead of cladding. Um, so I'd like to ask about that, please. And my other question um, and probably the thing that I am most concerned about is um, the, the footpaths and the road that Councillor Bastin raised. Um, so I, I'm assuming that's probably going to go to the highways officer. So that's two for me, please. Yeah. So if we go to Mr. Broomhead, if you want to delegate it, up to you, Mark. Yeah. I'll, I'll, um, in terms of uh, slate, I appreciate what the uh, uh, Councillor uh, Nicholas and Councillor Duffin and uh, Councillor May have raised. I mean, we have got a condition requiring materials. If members feel that they don't like the uh, cladding, you can ask for that to be amended uh, in your any future proposal. Does that answer your question? Uh, I'll transfer to um, Hugh for the RE aspect, but I think you've got to bear in mind this has already been granted and we can't go backwards. Um, we we'll leave ourselves wide open if we try and impose additional highway concerns uh, having already been that issue already have been dealt with, but if you wants to add to that. Hi there, yes. Um, obviously, as as uh, Mark has outlined and Councillor Bastin has outlined, uh, the access was considered in the 2016 application. Uh, the it, you know, with the limited highway space available going down into Penryn. Uh, a scheme. We had extensive discussions with the highway consultant, our road safety audit team, to come up with a design um, that would achieve maximum safety for for the uh, for the generated pedestrians. So um, yes, it's you know we've we discussed it in depth and short of looking through the comments in the in the previous application, um, I can say that we it was heavily involved the road safety audit team. Um, and have meetings on site, and uh, you know, given it was given full consideration. Okay. Uh, okay, Councillor Duffin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, David. Next one on your list. And next one is Councillor Nicholas. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Hello. Thank you. Um, it, it kind of like follows on with all the others about um, the uh, external materials uh, not in keeping, especially. 
if I get it correct, that we are close to Falmouth and Halford or part of special area of conservation. So um, I do think that the materials need to be considered in, in light of that and has that been taken on board. Also, um, he was just been saying that um, the access was looked at in 2016 and traffic has increased significantly since then and we've also declared a climate emergency since then so have we looked at ensuring that there is a proper fully protected cycleway come walkway um, on that piece of road that is missing given that we have now got all those other um, policies in place yeah over to you mark and then if you want to delegate yes it. um I, again, I just reiterate, if members aren't happy with specific parts of the materials, we have got a condition for officers to agree the finishes. If you want something specific, uh, that should form uh, part of any uh, future uh, proposal. In terms of highways, I appreciate what, what Councillor Nicholas is saying, but we can't go, uh, we can't bring that into account because this has already got outline permission. So that isn't an issue members should be debating in terms of that, that access. <clears throat> it's already granted and we cannot go uh, or impose any additional um, uh, requirements on that because that's actually got permission. Yeah. So could we not uh, ask our highways department to sort it out? Well, uh, I appreciate what you're saying, Councillor Nicholas, but this is already granted. We can't we, we are where we are with this. We cannot impose any additional uh, uh, requirements on the uh, developer and we would leave, leave ourselves wide open for a, uh, any future cost claims if we did because that's actually been granted and it's not for members to be debating in this application. The no, application. I don't think it's, I'm not saying about it needs to be on the, the developers because obviously that's all been agreed. Um, unfortunately but it's about why can we not get our highways department highways to actually sort out what the gap is in terms of um safety for the pedestrians well i think that it was looked at at the time in terms of the safety issues um i mean that's that's something outside of this uh planning uh decision we made today and if obviously there is a problem in the future then obviously um, it'd be for the local member to take that up with the um, highway authority. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, David, next speaker. Uh, Councillor Hurd. Yes, uh, over to you, Councillor Hurd. Yes, um, <clears throat> page 23, it says the 106 contribution, 2,736 per qualifying dwelling, but I can't find anywhere in this how many qualifying dwellings there are? Could somebody give me an idea? Yeah. Yeah. The sorry, sorry, Jim. No, I was just going to delegate to you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the qualifying dwelling be the open market dwellings because the affordable dwellings would be uh, occupied by people already in in that location. <laughs> okay, can't you hear? Yeah. Right. Next Thanks speaker. Much. David. Next speaker is. Uh, Councillor Katzmarek. Uh, right, uh, over to you, Mark. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a reserved matter, and uh, it's very difficult when something's already got outline planning. But it's very important as councillors we um, look at the right materials, and um, being so high on the profile of the hill, it's not right at the top, but these bright colours uh, are going to stand out like a sore thumb. So. Hopefully we can sort something out on on the um, external finishes on these buildings. I think that's very, very important. Uh, the other issue is because we have signed up for the um, uh, climate change emergency, uh, what type of energy are these uh, properties going to be generating uh, or, or using? Because um, I can't see any mention of the solar panels, uh, ground source heat pumps. You know, are they going to be gas? Are they going to be oil? Uh, what are they going to be and um, so we can put those conditions in I believe can't we? Over to you Mark. Yeah uh, unfortunately at this stage we, we shouldn't be putting those conditions in. The climate emergency is at, still out for consultation till the 25th of September. It has no significant weight at this stage to actually um, 
impose additional requirements. Uh, we're all obviously supportive of climate emergency, but we have to look at what's robust. Uh, I think the case officer did say he put an informative on to uh, encourage the developer to look at alternative uh, means of um, of uh, fuel saving and uh, to to uh, in perhaps look at perhaps solar panels to help with that. But we, we cannot impose these uh, stipulations at this stage. I appreciate it might be frustrating for some members, but until we get the actual policy adopted, it has little weight in the uh, decision making process. There are requirements under building regs at the moment, which is also being reviewed by the government to actually put in quite stringent uh, stipulations on uh, developers in the future, which may actually uh, overcome some of the concerns under separate legislation. All right, thank you. Uh, Angela, were you trying to get in? No, sorry, ignore that. No, OK, right. David, anybody else on your list? I see no qu other questions. Right, thank you. Um, are, are there any Cornwall councillors that are not member of the planning committee got any questions? No. Uh, are, are there any further comments that any of the officers or um, that, that wish to make or any questions they, they wish to ask? No. Right. W with that, we'll go into committee, which it will only be the committee members obviously that can speak. So um, I, I'm looking for somebody to open up the debate. Councillor Duffin, Chairman. Yeah, all right. Uh, over to you, Joyce. Um, I mean, there are obviously a lot of issues with this application, um, and I, I found the report very helpful. Um, the officer's report picking up uh, on a lot of what the objectors had raised. Um, I did find it helpful going through it. Um, it also makes it more difficult with it being reserved matters because um, you know, things like highways and pedestrian access and stuff um, aren't something we can look at. Um, I would be keen on putting um, some sort of recommendation for the materials. Um, I don't know whether that's something that the planning officer can d discuss with the local members, maybe. Um, I don't really think that's something that at committee um, we should be discussing and, and making up today. Um, I think it'd be more relevant for local members and, you know, councillors, officers that have experience on what the local materials would be to be able to discuss that. So um, I'm after some wording for that, if that's possible. Um, going through in detail all the other information, um, I think with the housing need, especially in Penryn Falmouth area, um, I would be looking to support this application. I'm happy to recommend approval, um, subject to having a condition added. Right, thank you. So so it's been moved by Councillor Duffin. Is there a seconder for that? Yes, me, Graham Code. Yeah, uh, OK. Um, if you'd like to come in, if you want to speak, Councillor Code. <laughs> yes, I agree with just about everything Joyce has said. Um, this is reserve matters. It's all been passed through um, uh, outline planning. It's in the Cornwall DPD, and every but every objection I've read online is answered by the officers and the consultees in the report. I see no valid grounds to do other than approve this, and I also approve of the um, uh, second look at the materials. I'm not fond of cladding. That's just my personal viewpoint. I second Joyce. Yeah, so right, that, that's been moved and seconded. So we've gone. We've we got any further speakers? Uh, no, Jim. No, I don't see any. So right, nobody else want to say anything. So with that, we'll then go to the vote. But um, could Mr. Bruno just come in and read out um, exactly what we need to add to address the concerns raised by members? Thank you, Chairman. Um, we got condition three on page 51, 
which says uh, the details of the materials be used in construction of the external surface of the buildings permitted uh, shall be submitted. Um, I think most members were saying they would rather have slate hanging rather than timber boarding. Was that correct? I'll go to the poser in the second area. Is yeah, that there was on? also um, the slate roof, which I don't know whether we do or not at the moment. We have got, a, sorry, it is proposed for a slate roof. Okay, brilliant. So, uh, no development above time shall commence until details of the materials to be used in construction like service. So, um, surfaces. The notwithstanding the approved plans, the sorry, timber clad. What, num what number recommendation have you got, Mark? I'm oh, sorry. If I just read this, Joss, and then I'll come to you. I'm on page 51, condition three. That's the damp proof course. Yeah, but if you read on, it's to do with the. Uh, okay, sorry. Yep, got you. Notwithstanding the approved plans, the timber cladding shall be replaced with slate hanging. Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure that I'm the one to be making that decision is what I wanted to raise. Oh. I would prefer that you discuss that with local members. These aren't, uh, when we have conditions, they're normally discharged by officers. I'll ask Ben a minute whether that, to, to bring in that, um, another party, obviously if there isn't agreement, then we, 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 we get into all sorts of uh, issues. I'll ask Ben a minute. Yeah, I'm not an expert on materials uh, in that well, area, so I don't want to be the one saying. <laughs> right, I thought that was what was being raised, sorry. I mean, if you're happy to just delegate it to the officers with that bear, bearing in mind, but obviously if we um, if we agree something that uh, members making this decision aren't happy with, so we need to be specific what, what you're not happy with. Um, do other members want to comment? I mean, Councillor Kazmarek, did you want to comment on that? Can you help okay, me out? If we, if we could just run through the chair a minute, Joyce. Um, okay. As second, if Graham comes in first, then I'll go to Mark. Okay. I'm content to leave the uh, is issue of uh, finishing two officers. I'm sure we can delegate this to experience and wise. Okay. <clears throat> um, Mark Kazmarek. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think if you listen to the local members, it was quite clear that uh, none of them were supportive of the bright colours because uh, that is not in keeping with the, um, the historic environment of Penrhyn and the, the, the historic buildings. So if we can lose those colours, um, you know, the cladding or, or slate, I haven't got a preference on that. I, th I think it's the bright colours that were the um, the main topic for the, the local members and a lot of the complainants because it will stand out like a sore thumb and won't be in keeping uh, with that hillside. So we, if we can get rid of those uh, bright colours and do something more sympathetic uh, and in keeping with the village or town of Penryn, uh, that would be my preference. Well, I just come back on that chairman. I appreciate what Councillor Kosmarek is saying but this isn't necessarily looked at in the context of the more historic part of Penrim in, in view of its location. Uh, my concerns are with the bright colours is that people can actually paint them afterwards with whatever colour they wish. And, uh, you know, unless it's listed, uh, we have little control over people's um, future aspirations and how they want their property to look. So I think we're getting down into a little bit of detail that could be quite difficult to enforce. If I can just come back then, and I think if we go for slate, then there, there's no argument on the on the colour scheme. Uh, we've all seen schemes that have been painted in or in Camborne and, uh, and and other places, and, and those paints, especially on the, the higher buildings, are very really difficult for people to, to maintain. Uh, and they, 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 they look unsightly after a, a, a short number of years. So if we can go for slate hanging, I think that will satisfy everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to the um, proposer in a second in a moment. I'll, I'll just try and get through the other speakers. Uh, next speaker we've got, David. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, Councillor Nicholas. Oh, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think the, the coloured palette that they're suggesting is a bit out of keeping and looks more like a seaside town thing. Um, I think it should be in whatever the local area has in terms of design. So whether you put granite and render, whether you put slate, but it's certainly, I think um, it needs to be um, toned down a little bit, especially where it's close to ancient woodlands and to uh, that scientific specialist area. Thank you. Um, but David? Uh, Councillor John Martin, sure. Yeah, well, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, yes, um, uh, rather than <coughs> stipulate materials, I would thought that it's the variety along the line of, of the houses, rather than repeating the, the face of the, of the buildings motif to become fairly monotonous along a row of houses, there should be more variety relative to the, the look of Penryn and, and, the, and the materials used in Penryn. Um, it's it's the, the the monotony of the line of buildings I'm I'm concerned about, so a variety I'd be much more, much happier with. Thank you. Uh, right, uh, David, next figure. Yeah, I've got a Councillor Biggs next, Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Councillor Biggs. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I agree with what people are saying about the colour schemes. I think this is a common theme. Um, what worries me is that. Once you start talking about colour schemes, you're talking about design as well. To me, you cannot uh, differentiate between the two. They are integrated. So you're talking about colour schemes and design, particularly with three storey um, buildings on a hillside. So uh, that, that would worry me. I don't see how you how you can specify one without re-specifying re the other, without re-specifying design. And the point which uh, Marcus Marek has made about Camborne is well made. Camborne really understands um, what inappropriate materials and inappropriate colour schemes can do. So um, I couldn't support this <coughs> until I have a clearer idea of what the impact on the design would be. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Councillor Biggs. Uh, D David, next one I got. Uh, Councillor Coe, Chairman. Yeah, um, I, I was going to come back for you to um, wind up, Graham, but is it something you want to bring at this stage? Yes, I, I really. Joyce came up with a very um, good proposal and then we've got bogged down in some people like colours, other people don't. Um, John Martin, I agree with John Martin, I get sick and fed up with seeing the whole estates all done in one limestone colour or white or whatever, drab. And, utilitarian looking and uh, it's nice to see a little bit of colour. I don't think these are bright colours, I see them as pastel colours, sort of thing that would be permitted in Bath. So I'm quite prepared just to go along with Joyce's proposal and let's not get bogged down with details of painting. As Mark Broomhead has pointed out, once people have bought the houses they paint them whatever colour they like and it's not really an issue for this committee, surely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, right. Uh, I, I see Councillor Bastin there. I'll check with Angela. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Bastin spoke as the divisional member. Would, would it be appropriate for him to speak? No, it's not appropriate no. for him to speak now because we're in committee and he's the divisional member. Yeah, it's a sorry about that, John. Do, do you have any further speakers, David? In which case, I have nothing up there, Chairman. No. Right. Well, I'll, I'll go on at a pace while we're on top. And uh, so I'll just come back to, to Joyce and and um, as the proposer and Graham as seconder. Is, is there any further comment you want to make before I put it to the vote? Well, uh, this is kind of what I didn't want to happen to us all having a discussion about what we like and don't like. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm happy just to leave it to officers to have a look at it further would be great. Thank you. Thank you. You're happy with that, Graham? Yes, absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Right, uh, Mr. Broomhead, could you just read out what we're going to vote on? Well, as I understand it now, Chairman, we're voting on the recommendation as set out in the report and the addendum. Obviously, the the um, developers heard how the members and the local members have felt about the finishes, and hopefully they will consider that when they put in their details. But we're we're not, as I understand, changing any of the conditions now. Mm. Right. So, yeah. So if everybody's happy with that, what you'll be voting for will be the approval as per agenda with, with the 
uh, uh, the recommendation from the addendum and a little bit that's been added in by Mr Broomhead there. So um, those in favour of that recommendation, please show. Oh, sorry, it's going to be a roll oh, call. Yeah, Chairman, it will be sorry. roll Okay, yep. uh, I'll, I'll wake up in a minute. Yeah, over to you, Angela. Okay, thank you. Councillor Biggs. Against. Councillor Code. Councillor Code, you're on mute at the moment. Four. Thank you. Councillor Duffin. Four. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Catchmarrick. Against. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor Nicholas. Against. Councillor Pascoe. Councillor Pascoe, you're on mute at the moment. Councillor Pascoe, I'll just continue for a minute. Councillor Robinson. Four. Councillor Th Thomas, John Thomas. Against. Councillor Mike Thomas. Against. Right, Councillor Pascoe. Uh, Staying, I missed the first 10 minutes of the proposal. OK, so. thank you. If you bear with me a moment, I'll um, just count up the vote. Um, we have a tie with six votes in favour, six against and one abstention. So I need the chairman's casting vote, please. Yeah, well. I, I voted four, so I can't change my mind at this stage, so it, it would obviously be four. OK, so the application has been approved by seven votes in favour, including the chairman's casting vote, six against and one abstention. Right, thank you. So um, with that, we go on to the next item on the agenda, which that's um, four two. Uh, that's PA 20 forward slash 01863. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Massey, Vicarage Farm, Underlane, Wendron, and that's pages 53 to 65. And I think um, uh, Peter Gregory's taking us through that one. Are, are you there, Peter? Uh, morning, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning, Peter. Are you sharing your screen with us? If you can just right. test that a moment. Well, I am. Yeah, right. Th thank you. So over to you, Peter. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is for the provision of an indoor sand school to support a racehorse rehabilitation charity. And the scheme involves uh, a, new, a new scheme of landscaping as well to screen the building and the retention of a new access that's just been installed. Uh, moving on to the key issues, it's the principal need for development and the landscape impact uh, this development will have in this area. As you can see, the site occupies a fairly remote rural location uh, to the north of the A394, Halston to Falmouth Road. Um, just to give a bit of context, the sites here in red, Vicarage Farm here, that's existing farm buildings. Uh, Kankai, the village of Kankai Wendron is just off the shot to the north here, so it's a fairly open um, exposed landscape, uh, rural landscape here. And as you can see, in terms of constraints, the World Heritage Site is, is, is shown here. The site is outside of that historic designation. Uh, turning to the site plan, um, you can see this is the application site here for the building. <coughs> Excuse me. That is a rather large field to the southwest of the main group of farm buildings. You can see the vehicular access from, from Underlane and Unclassified Highway is here. That's an aerial plan. Obviously, the site at the, at the moment is just laid to pasture, uh, laid to grass and undeveloped. Again, you can see the existing yard of farm buildings uh, and dwelling um, associated with the farm located there. 
Uh, turning to the plans, the proposed block plan. Uh, this is the site of the building here, the footprint of the building. Um, immediately to the south southwest of the yard of buildings, um, you have what you have proposed as well, which has been secured by by planning condition. Further details of a, a scheme of landscaping and screening for the building in this location here, where views into it will be will be the most prominent, and the existing hedgerows here to be retained as well, and that also will be secured by by the condition. Turning to the building itself, it is a large, fairly fairly functional agricultural type building to house an in, indoor sand school um, for the business to allow allow the horses to be trained and exercised all year round effectively. That that's that that's that's why why it is proposed. Because um, at the minute there is no indoor facility for that for the winter months. Uh, so it's a fairly simple, like I said, agricultural type building, timber cladding and concrete panels here at the lower level, about 4.8 metres to the eaves, 7.4 metres to the ridge, um, and that's the side elevations. Again, now looking at proposed end elevations, you can see the use of materials there, timber cladding, concrete panels below, and obviously the dimensions of the building are on the plan, you can see there. A fairly basic floor plan, obviously it, it, it just to house house that indoor indoor riding facility. Returning to the to site photographs, this is the access from from the highway, unclassified rural roads. You can see the new entrance, which is part of the proposal to be retained, coming through here. And the highways officer has no objection to that, subject to a condition which is going to be imposed to secure this first five meters here of not to be loose material. And again, the new access into the site, looking further into the site, which obviously allows improvements with forward visibility and width for vehicles accessing uh, the farm. And this is on site looking west of the field itself where the building is, is proposed. That's the paddock or, or, or large field where the building is going to be proposed. And then another view looking southwest. I'm stood next to the adjacent to the existing farm buildings looking out into the field. And this is where the building is proposed. Turning to longer distance viewpoints, obviously this is this is quite an exposed landscape. Um, this is looking north from the A394 at Rotana, which is quite an open section of highway. And you can see the site from here, as you can see there, the, the building will sit in this location here. And there you can see the existing farm buildings and there's the Rotana holiday park in the foreground there. So it will be viewed in the context of existing development, rising land uh, and, and, and the holiday park there as well. And there's just some other views um, set back on the opposite side of the highway. You can see the application site in here, caravan park in the foreground again. And, and another view here from the highway, just a bit further down um, the road towards the underlying junction. And you can see the building can be sited in that location there. So in summing up, um, the new building is required to enhance the operational capacity of this established rural equine business. And following consultation, the council's land agent does support the application, so that's the building is required um, to support the growing business and, and, and its, you know, its operational capacity, particularly during for year-round purpose, purposes. Subject to the imposition of a suitable planning condition, which is imposed in the report to secure a scheme of landscaping, the proposal will not result in overriding harm to the identified remote landscape character in this location. There will obviously be some landscape impact, um, but this is weighed against the clear economic and social benefits of supporting a rural business and employment in the local area. Thus, the moderate impacts which are addressed in the report are considered to be acceptable in the planning balance in this particular case. And the recommendation is approval with conditions. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, we have got speakers and the first speaker is Councillor Mark Stevens of um, Wendron Parish Council. Uh, can you hear me, Councillor Stevens? Yes, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, the usual format will be three minutes and we'll give you a prompt when there's uh, 30 seconds to go. So when you're ready, your time will start then. OK, good morning all. Um, basically, um, I've been asked to, uh, to speak briefly about this application um, with regards to the Parish Council. 
Um, so basically, we wanted to highlight the fact that there's not been an application for the departure from the historic use um, of the uh, of the fields or for the agricultural surroundings of Vicarage Farm. Uh, there's no business plan being put into place, and uh, the proposed building, by virtue of its size, will have a massive and detrimental impact on the open <coughs> nature of the countryside. Um, this area lies within the landscape character area 10. Um, and is therefore contrary to policies 1, 2, 12 and 23 of the Cornwall Local Plan and paragraphs 7, 17 and 61 of the National Planning Policy Framework of 2012. Um, <coughs> the building itself or the, um, is going to measure 85 metres, uh, sorry, 85 feet by 200 feet. Uh, so it's quite a sizable, um, sizable undertaking. And um, a similar project, literally only a mile away in Khan Kai, was only refused last week for permission um, under the same sort of uh, circumstances. Um, so, yeah, that's practically all we all we have to say on the matter, really. But um, but there you go. Right. Uh, thank you, Councillor. If, if you can just wait to see if we've got any questions. Um, have any of the members got qu a question for um, Councillor Stevens? Not like so, Chairman. Uh, right, thank you. Right, uh, thank you for attending this morning, uh, Councillor Stevens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, no problem at all. Thank you very much. Have a good day, all. Right, thank you. Uh, right, the uh, next speaker is Mr. Paul Massey. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, Mr. Massey. Hello, yeah. Yeah, uh, good morning, Mr. Massey. Uh, usual format, it'll be three minutes, and we'll remind you when it's got 30 seconds to go. So your time will start when you're ready and start speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, sir. I'm uh, Paul Massey. I'm one of the applicants and uh, trustee at the charity. Uh, the charity Racehorse Relief is a registered charity that rehabilitates ex racehorses and rehomes them. The uh, charity was founded in 2011 uh, and we're the only industry approved centre in the southwest. We've submitted planning for an indoor arena, and the goals for the uh, indoor arena are to help us train horses specifically all year round and. Um, as we outlined in our business plan, which is part of the proposal, um, we expect that to improve productivity of the charity by about four times. Um, that means four times more horses rehomed and four times more revenue for the charity. Um, uh, and that means we'll be um, we'll make the charity more self-sustaining um, and lead to job creation. We think up to sort of five jobs over the next few years. Um, if we're unsuccessful, then it means uh, we'd need to either train off site, which when we've got 20 horses with daily training requirements isn't very practical, or um, we shut down uh, in the winter months, which is probably what we'd need to do. So that means losing staff and um, retraining stops, which vastly extends the sort of rehabil rehabilitation time. And that's because of the weather conditions and lack of light, basically, for the level of training we need to do. Um, if we're successful, um, then uh, no further development is required because uh, we have all the facilities the charity needs. We've invested already a lot in, in the site uh, in terms of stabling, fencing, etc. Um, the proposed building is an agricultural style, so it's in keeping with all the existing buildings, both on our site and in the nearby area. Um, it is visible from the road, but the visibility is quite minimal. You kind of, if you drive by, you have to be looking over your shoulder and it's just 60 limits um, and it's just a, a brief glimpse you get of it. Um, and we've got extensive landscaping plans to put a bund in place and uh, lots of planting. Uh, and we think the timber style will, as it ages, will blend in quite nicely um, and generally have a good relationship with the on-site buildings. Um, we know the division member had some concerns that they raised um, about a similar planning in the area, but um, that was a substantial build on quite a modest holding, um, so we think it's quite different. Um, and it had a very weak business case, unlike our sort of quite detailed business plan. Um, we've also spoken to neighbours in the area, and the Caravan Park has not raised left. any concerns. Um, so I'd just like to emphasise if we're successful with the planning, uh, then it would be really transformational for the charity. Um, and uh, conversely, if we're unsuccessful, then we're really going to need to revisit about how we can make the uh, charity self-sustaining in the long term. So I'd just like to thank the committee for giving us the opportunity to speak. Thank, yeah, you. Right, uh, thank you, Mr. Massey. If you could just hang on just in case we've got any questions. Are, are there any questions, David? Yeah, uh, um, right. Uh, who's first on your list, David? Uh, Councillor Martin. Hmm. Sorry? 
Councillor John Martin. Uh, yeah. uh, Councillor Martin, over to you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Massey. Um, thanks for coming this morning. Um, have you looked at uh, lowering the, the 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 base of the building more into the into the into the field, um, uh, lowering it further down a, a meter or a meter and a half might um, the pro profile. Uh, that's not something that's uh, being considered. I mean, it, it's definitely something that, that we could consider um, in, in terms of the kind of visibility of um, uh, certainly in terms of like the caravan site and things. They're, they're significantly lower than us, so it, it'd really just be from that road. Um, so the main recommendation has just been to um, have the band and the, the planting to, to, to break that, that skyline. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, did, do you have any other speakers, David? Uh, no other questions, Sherman. Right. Uh, well, thank you very much for attending this morning, Mr. Massey. Thank you. And um, no right with that, we go to the um, divisional member, which is um, Councillor Lovetay Jenkins. Uh, are you there, Lovetay? Yes, I am. Thank you yeah. very much. Over to you. Um, yes. Uh, um, I, notwithstanding the fact that this is a maybe a worthy concern, there are significant concerns about the size of this building and also the fact that, that there has been no change of use from agricultural to commercial equine and although it's a charity it is a commercial equine in terms of planning use so therefore there is a consideration that hasn't been brought up within the planning application. Um, this building will be the size of half a football pitch or three tennis courts um, and 24 foot high. Now there are no trees in the area apart from non-native ones that are able to grow 24 foot high in that sort of open area. So um, I have concerns that the planting itself will not um, enhance the open landscape and actually probably will form an incongruous um, uh, part of the landscape just by having tall trees in that area. Um, probably this area is visible and the, the officer didn't show it but visible from the public footpath um, going up Ritana Hill it would have been useful to have a view from that site which overlooks the area. Um, it's situated on a hill spur on the 160 metre to 168 metre contours. So it's highly visible to the south and the west. It's an untreed open landscape and the higher land to the east overlooks it. So Ritana Caravan Park, yes, is sunk down into the landscape, but there are other vantage points which are much more significant. Um, the only planning permission for that site is for a private use sand school. There has been no planning application for a commercial sand school uh, in that area. So again, we're talking about a change of use to business from agricultural, um, which again is a concern. And there's another concern that the access had already been created with no planning permission as well. So local people have concerns that uh, there will be increased development there, that the massing and size of the building is such that it will have an incongruous aspect on the local landscape, that if there is tree planting around it, that also will be an incongruous aspect on, on the local landscape. This is a medieval landscape. It's part of the Manor of Visca. Um, Originally, all those fields were strip fields with crofts and open hilltops above. So this is situated in what would have been an open hilltop croft area. It's surrounded by Cornwall wildlife sites. It is maybe not remote, but quiet area. Um, and putting a business use into this quiet area with, you know, a large number of um, uh, horses there and potential for a large number of vehicle movements is something that hasn't been considered in this business case and planning application. So I'd ask the members to consider all this and consider whether the gains for the business um, outweigh the impact 
on the landscape and the impact on on the residents in that area and people who use that open countryside for leisure and uh, um, amenity as well and you know to highlight that the area down the road with a much smaller building um, was considered to be too visible in the local landscape character at a previous planning meeting and this is far more visible and as I say on a hill spur sticking out so it's not um, it's not going to be easy to hide it within the landscape and planting may actually make things worse thank you very much All right, uh, thank you love day um, right uh, as any of the members got a question for love day um, yeah so council Nicholas chairman Hi Loveday, thanks for that. Um, just to clarify really, the caravan site just down the road, is that residential or is that a holiday site? That's a good question. It's supposed to be holiday, but I do know that there are permanent residents there as well. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> there are some, there are a few um, plots that are designated as residential, but there have also been residential use of some of the caravans in the past. Okay, thank you. Uh, do, do you have any other questions, Dave? Uh, no other questions, Chairman. Oh, thank you. So with that, we'll go on. To, are, are there any uh, questions from the committee members for any of the officers? Uh, Councillor Duffin, Chairman. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Joyce. Thanks. I just wondered um, whether the officers could, could tell us, does the building have to be that size or is there an option to have a smaller building? Mark, yeah, yeah, I mean, I the, the actual size is dictated by the actual business. Um, I don't know if Peter wants to add to that, but uh, it has to be a certain size, as I understand, because to actually uh, make it use usable and beneficial <laughs> for the actual process that's being carried out in the rehabilitation. Have you got any more you want to add, Peter? Um, I agree with that, Mark. It's and, and it's also supported by the land agent who, who would consider the size and the building in relation to the needs of the business as well. So, yeah, I agree with that. OK, thank you. Thank you. Were there um, any other questions, David? Uh, yes, uh, well, Councillor Jenkin would like to uh, comment, I think, or ask a question. Uh, right, yeah, that's OK, uh, Councillor Jenkin. Yeah, it was really to ask the officer um, about the change of use from a private sand school to a commercial enterprise um, and commercial equine and how that will be conditioned if it was to be approved. Over to you, Mark. <coughs> uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. The, um, the obviously uh, uh, just grazing on the land is still falls under would fall under agriculture, but I appreciate this is a, a different business side of it. Um, I'm, I'm not aware uh, of any planning permission being given for that uh, use, but we could um, look at uh, conditions to uh, strengthen that. Um, if the actual use ceased, we'd have to look at uh, various conditions if, if members felt that way. When we uh, when we dealt with it, have you got any more you want to add, Peter? Uh, no, nothing further to add to that, Mark. We we could we could look at doing that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, David, have we any other questions? Uh, no other questions, Chairman. No. Uh, has any of the officers got any questions or any comments they want to make? No. If not, we'll go into the commit uh, into committee. And uh, if somebody like to open a debate. Um, Councillor Code. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a charity for retired um, racehorses. And I don't know if any of you know much about racehorses, but I've seen a few brought down to West Cornwall for retirement. And as a sound school, when you want to give them a bit of exercise and stretch their legs, they need a lot of space. They get up to a really fast speed. A small covered sand school would probably be, be dangerous. <clears throat> Further, successive governments lately have been urging farmers and agricultural contractors to diversify on the land and make the most use of it. 
Here we have a very good example, a national charity, local, um, that needs a big shed. It's an agricultural area. It's an agricultural equine use. I think we should approve this application and not get bogged down in minor details. Um, uh, yes, I suggest and propose uh, approval, please. All right, so approval has been moved. Is there a secondary for Councillor Code? Uh, Councillor Duffin, perhaps? Yeah, I'm happy to second that. Uh, I think with the Council's land agent having looked at it and supporting it, I'm happy to support. All right, thank you. So that's been moved and seconded. So we've got other speakers. Um, next one on your list, David? Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, Councillor Sue Nicholas. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a, a, a great idea, and I, I will be supporting it. I just wonder, does it need to be that high? Resources don't jump. So I just wondered <laughs> whether it needed to be quite that high if the, if the concern is about the, the height of it sitting in the landscape, and I think also about looking at conditioning it should that fail at some point in in future. Mr. Broomhead. Michael Mark. Sorry, Chairman. Yeah, I'm I'm not uh, an expert in that field, but I take my um, advice from the county land agent, who's actually obviously he's supporting it, and I think the height is probably <coughs> increased slightly by having some, uh, although be quite shallow pitch on it, to make it more visually attractive. Although I appreciate uh, Councillor Jenkins' concerns in terms of its size. It, uh, it is a building that uh, we would expect to see it in, in the countryside location, and that's the only place it can go. I appreciate right. each, each site has a different um, a different visual impact, but it's for members to decide whether they feel that out, that okay. um, the need okay. outweighs the impact. Lovely, thanks. Uh, David, who's next? Yes, uh, Councillor Pascoe, Jim. Yeah, um, over to you, Councillor Pascoe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, um, I'm quite concerned about the size and mass of this building. Uh, when you're coming from Falmouth going to Halston, uh, coming down Ratana Hill, you you all you'll see is this enormous building. Um, I think that uh, John, not John Thomas, the other Halston uh, councillor. Councillor Martin had the idea of whether it could be lowered and uh, I think that uh, I be quite honestly I can't uh, support this one at the moment because of the size of it and it, exactly where it's going to be put to because the, you will see it everywhere so uh, I think that it has to be lowered or dug in the ground a little bit more or something like that so uh, I'll leave it there for a minute. Thank you. Uh, right, David. Yeah, uh, Councillor Katzmarek. Yeah, Councillor Yes, thank you. Uh, just answer to Nicholas uh, Nichols' um, questions. Racehorses do jump, so there's a famous one called the Grand National. Do you remember that one? Um, yeah, anyways, but obviously, yeah, yeah, the other ones. Yeah, and there are other steeple chases as well. But no, to have an equestrian um, building, you do need the height and the space because a horse will feel uh, hemmed in. Obviously, they've got riders on their back as well, so it give, gives the horse um, a little bit more security that they aren't um, too confined. Um, this is a good business, I believe, and, and it's a business I, I think could grow and it will generate employment. And I think what we do suffer from here in Cornwall is a lack of rural employment, uh, and this will hopefully um, do that in an area where there, there isn't a lot of employment. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone seconded uh, Graham Code's uh, proposal for approval, but I will second it if no one has. Yeah, it's been moved and seconded. Councillor Duffin was seconded of Councillor Kasmarek. Um, right, so David, next figure. Yes, Chairman. Councillor Mike Thomas. Yeah, uh, uh, Councillor Mike Thomas. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I, I would like to support this. Uh, I can I can see as a business it looks very interesting and offers pros you know, the prospects of work. But 
material planning issue here is what I feel we should be discussing, and that is the actual massing of this business, this business, I'm oh, sorry, this this uh, shed on on the uh, horizon is just going to be huge. And Councillor Pascoe and Councillor Martin have really identified this. And I really think, although we're into a debate here, I just wonder whether there is any feasibility of it being reduced in height by a metre, because it will be quite a dominant building uh, on that Ratana Hill. Uh, Mr. Brumad. <clears throat> well, our members can uh, obviously, it's members' decision, and obviously they can make whatever recommendations they wish. I just feel that this, due to the size of the building, a metre would be quite uh, neg negligible in terms of its actual impact. It's the actual size of the building uh, we're looking at, and a, a metre reduction I don't think will be that noticeable, but it's up for members to decide if they want to uh, recommend that. Thank you. Um, next speaker, Dave, please. Uh, uh, Councillor Robinson, Chairman. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Councillor Robinson. Yeah, thank you. Um, I understand why people um, are sort of focusing on on the scale of the building because it is it is a large building. Um, but we have heard from the land agent really that it, uh, has already been has already been said that um, in, you do need a building of that size. The business certainly justifies a building of that size. But if we're going to remind people of the photographs that we were looking at, actually, uh, to me, that holiday park is a bigger blot on the landscape than than the building that's going to be some distance behind it. The um, the um, sort of farmstead itself, uh, uh, where the business is located, uh, appeared to have uh, quite tall barns associated with it, and uh, and unlike the holiday uh, home park and the, the and the and the farm building itself, um, there's going to be a lot of effort put in to actually screen that that building uh, and 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 make a lot of that element uh, disappear uh, disappear. Um, a couple of people have suggested that we should go down, down perhaps a metre. Well, what in fact they're planning to do is actually bring the ground level away from the building up to screen it. Uh, and I think this is a, um, a very um, sound charity. Um, uh, and, and, and with this, allowing this building, it will be, um, it will secure its, it, its, its business you know, for the future uh, with a much uh, greater capacity to, um, to, to support the uh, equine industry. And I think it's an absolute must. I think it's a no-brainer from my point of view. We must support this industry. All right, thank you. Uh, David, uh, yeah, any other speakers? I've got Councillor Code, Chairman. Yeah, um, right, over to you, Graham. And as you're the proposer, if you'd like to wind up on it. Yes, certainly. Uh, I'd like to come first of all to suggestions about um, uh, making it a flatter roof or a lower pitch. Um, a bit of knowledge of building stuff, not a vast amount, but if you lower the pitch or go for a flat roof on a building of this size, you'll have to have a load of steel supports going right up through the middle on the inside, which is absolutely nonsense for a sand school. Uh, danger of um, injury of death doors is careering into them. So I think they've got it as low as it can possibly be. And I'll repeat, these big, strong, fit horses do need lots of space to move around. And uh, I think it's entirely appropriate. It's a countryside business, um, a, a charitable and very worthy countryside business in the countryside. And they're looking at an agricultural style building to properly perform the, the work they want to do. And I, I just can't see any reason why we should want to um, refuse this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Right, so uh, we've got no further speakers, so I'm going to put it to the vote. So the vote would be as printed in the agenda, which is the recommendation for approval with, with the conditions as printed. Uh, so we'll go back to roll call again. Over to you, Angela. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Four. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Four. Councillor Duffin. Four. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Katchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Abstain. Councillor Robinson. Four. Councillor Thomas. John Four. Thomas. Councillor John Thomas. 
Four. Thank you. Councillor Mike Thomas. Against. If you bear with me while I can count those up a moment. That's been carried by 12 votes in favour, one against and one abstention. So the application has been approved. Right, thank you. Um, but belatedly, um, would, would members like to take a comfort break for 10 minutes? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, OK, so by my watch, it's uh, 20, 20 to 12. So uh, we um, will meet again at 10 to 12, if that's OK with everybody. I remind you that um, live stream is still on, so please behave yourselves. Thank you.
Uh, Angela, can you check if everybody's back, please? Uh, yes. Uh, Councillor Bastin. Councillor Bastin. Hello, Angela. Sorry. Right, yes. Yep. Yes, I'm here. Thank yeah. you. Councillor Biggs. Yes. Councillor Code. Standing by. Councillor Dobbin. Yes. Councillor Eakin Smith. Councillor Eakin Smith. I'll come back to him. Can I'm back. I'm back. Oh, you are lovely. Thank you. Councillor Heard. Councillor Heard. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Katchmarek. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Nicholas. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Pasco. I'm here. Councillor Robinson. Still alive. Councillor John Thomas. Yes, here. And Councillor Mike Thomas. Yes, Miss. All present and correct, Chairman. Right. With, with that, we'll carry on with the next item on the agenda for business. It's uh, four three, and that's PA two zero forward slash zero three eight five zero SPS Architectural uh, Land at Chapel Meadows, Chapel Meadow, Porth Town, and it's on pages sixty six to seventy seven. Uh, Hannah England has taken us through that one. Uh, are you there, Hannah? Hello, thank you, Chair. Uh, good chair. morning, Hannah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, we'll just check. Um, you're sharing your screen with us. We'll just check that's working first. Yeah, that's fine. So um, over to you when you're ready, Hannah. Brilliant. Thank you, Chair. Before I begin, there is one addition to the addendum within the officer's report in paragraphs 19, 22 and 23. The dwelling to the north of the site has been incorrectly referred to as Porth Town or Porth Town House. The actual name of this neighbouring dwelling is Porth Town Farm Bungalow. <coughs> the application relates to the erection of a two bed dwelling on land at Chapel Meadows, Porth Town. The key issues to consider in assessing this application are the principle of the residential development on the site, the visual and landscape impacts, the impact on residential amenity and the parking provisions and the impact on highway safety. The application site is within the administrative boundaries of Portree Parish, immediately adjoining the parish of St Agnes. The site is not subject to any sensitive designations, but does adjoin the edge of the World Heritage Site. The site is located in the northwest corner of a housing estate known as Chapel Meadow, sited off of the main road which runs southeast of Port Town towards Port Reef. The existing estate gained permission for 12 affordable dwellings in 2003 as a rural exception site. Further permission for nine affordable dwellings was obtained in 2012. This is an aerial plan showing the rural surrounds and the agricultural land to the west of the site. The existing site comprises an irregular parcel of land as edged in red and the land is grassland accessed off of the turning head serving the wider estate. In this plan you will notice the relatively uniform layout of the existing estate and each dwelling enjoying a simple linear plot. Planning permission is sought for a single storey building of a modest proportions finished with off-right painted render a slate roof with matching red tiles and white UPVC openings. The site would be laid out with the dwelling tucked into the western corner and two vehicle parking spaces laid out to the east. The more private immunity areas would be to the rear and to the side. Members will be aware of the previous scheme refused by the planning committee in January of this year the previous scheme was for a two storey dwelling in the corner of the site with two parking spaces to the east. This application was refused because it would have resulted in a cramped form of development which would have been out of character and detrimental to the visual immunity of the street scene. This is the street scene elevation of the previously refused scheme with the proposal in the middle. And the site photographs. This photograph has been taken within the area of green open space 
looking towards the development site at the rear. Here is the development site with the housing estate on the left and Porth Town Farm Bungalow on the right. And in the photo above here, you can see the dwellings which form Chapel Meadow. This is the site in its current form. It's currently fenced off at the edge of the estate. The proposed parking area would be here towards the rear of these vehicles. The principle of residential development in this location is acceptable and the development as set out would not significantly harm the residential amenities of the occupiers of neighbouring dwellings. The proposal includes a suitable level of off-street parking provisions. However, whilst the principle of the development is undisputed, the proposal would result in a harmful visual impact. The existing dwellings of Chapel Meadow have clearly been designed as a whole and comprise a series of terrace dwellings which are well designed with a relatively uniform layout, all orientated in the same plane. By contrast, the constrained parameters of this awkwardly, awkwardly shaped plot have dictated the layout rather than it being designed as a response to the street scene. When viewed in the context of the two-storey housing estate, the proposal would fail to affect the character of the built environment, appearing cramped and contrived. The application is therefore recommended for refusal. Thank you. Right, uh, thank you, Anna. Um, we, we have got speakers on this. Uh, right, uh, I'm trying, is, is that Councillor Stewart? Hello. Chairman, Hello. Third meeting producer. Oh, he just unmuted. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. So, is that Councillor Stewart? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, good morning, and um, well, welcome to the meeting. I, I don't. Know, are you listening on live stream? As we seem to be picking that up. Yeah. yeah. I'll shut. Yeah, shut that down. Right. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the format is that um, you'll have three minutes to speak and we'll give you a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go and the time will start when you're comfortable and you start speaking. So over to you. OK, thank you, Chairman. Good morning. Uh, my name's Ian Stewart and I'm the Chairman of Portree Parish Council. Uh, our Parish Council has now had three planning applications made for this site by the applicant. The first was for a small two bedroom bungalow. And with just a few minor proposals, such as obscured glass on the bathroom window, Port Reef Council decided to support that application. It's worth pointing out that the property boundary is also the parish boundary, and furthermore, worth mentioning that the neighbouring parish of St Agnes, acting as consultees, also supported that application. A few months later, a new application was submitted. This time, it was for a much larger three-bedroom, two-storey property, which the case officer has just mentioned. We objected to this on the grounds of it being overshadowing and overbearing to the neighbour's property, that there were privacy issues due to the orientation of the building, and also it was felt it was far too large a property for the size of the site. This again was also the view of the St Agnes Council and they too objected. The applicant's agent stated at that time that that change was on the recommendation of the planning officer who was dealing with the case. We disagreed and brought our objections to this committee. At the committee hearing, the planning officer dealt with the objections and also all the other issues that had been raised by the neighbours, such as Section 106 commitments for green space provision, parking issues, highway access off the wider development, etc. He stated he was satisfied on all counts and recommended approval. Your committee, however, supported the objections put forward and the decision was to reject that application. Now we have the latest application, whereby the applicant has reverted back to a small two-bedroom bungalow. As a parish council, we saw no reason to change our original decision and supported the application, as once again did St Agnes Council. The planning officer now dealing with the case has listed a number of objections and his recommended refusal, although still accepting that the 106 provisions, etc. mentioned earlier were not an issue. One point raised in the officer's report is that Port Reith does not yet have an approved NDP. However, we have consulted widely in the preparation for our NDP submission, which is going out for public consultation on October the 5th. And the need for small one or two bedroom homes for the young or elderly has been established as a need in the parish. 
In the latest response regarding this application from St. Agnes Council, they also recognise the need for this provision. I'd like to state that as parish councillors, we're not experts in planning law and ordinarily we would support the planning officer's more knowledgeable recommendations. However, we are now confused. We have heard the first planning officer state that he was satisfied that a large three bedroom, two storey house met all local planning and other requirements. And yet we now we have the present officer stating a small two bedroom bungalow does not. I would therefore respectfully suggest that one of your officers must be wrong and ask you to seek clarification on this matter before making your final decision. Thank you, Chairman, for your time today. Yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor. If, if you could just hang on a moment, just in case uh, some of the committee's got um, a question for you. Uh, are there any questions, David? Uh, no questions, Chairman. Yeah. Uh, right, th thank you very much, Councillor Stewart, for attending. Thank, thank you. you. Um, right, the next speaker we got is Mr. Paul, um, yeah, Mr. Paul Bateman. Um, I don't know, Mr. Bateman, I don't know if you can hear me. I can, Chairman, thank yeah, you. I, I think you've got live stream on. Could you turn that off, please? Because <laughs> we're picking it up. Yeah, sorry. That, that's fine. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Bateman, and thank you for attending the meeting. Um, it will be three minutes, usual format, and we'll give you a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go. Uh, your time will start once you're comfortable and you start speaking. Over to you. Thank you for your time. Usually, I would be using this time to address either policy concerns or technical issues that would have led to the committee considering this proposal. But in this case, there are none. Indeed, as it's been mentioned, your officers recently recommended that this committee approve an application for a two-storey dwelling on the same site. The officers requested that the applicant refer to it to a two-storey dwelling design from an initial single-storey proposal at that time. On the earlier scheme, the two parish councils that were consulted objected and members refused the application accordingly. During the debate, however, it was commented by members that there would be a preference for a single storey dwelling. The applicant has listened to the committee and the parish and responded with this revised single storey dwelling design. The two parish councils now both fully support the current proposal and you've heard from one. Uh, the neighbouring resident at Port Town Farm, Bangalow, has also stated that this is their preferred scheme. The proposal meets the design standards for accessible living accommodation, parking provision and private amenity spe uh, space. Sorry. The officer reports that there are no impacts on existing residential amenity and the site has no other planning purpose. In fact, there's a very well laid out public open space within this uh, estate. Strangely, the application, applicant now finds himself in a position where he has satisfied the concerns of the parish council and members of the committee, but now faces objection to the design from the officers of the council. Now, I'm sure you'll appreciate that where a site is found acceptable for housing, having regard to the national planning policy framework, the presumption in favour of sustainable development, policy free of the Cornwall local plan, and the emerging aspirations of a neighbourhood plan, the delivery of a dwelling should not be frustrated by conflict between the aspirations of the officers of the council and the preference of its elected members, both at parish and uh, local authority level. The framework states that where a dwelling is compliant with policy, it should be approved without delay. The National Plan and Practice Guidance adds that it is unreasonable for an authority to delay the delivery of housing in such circumstances. The applicant has previously offered members the officer's design preference and members refuse that proposal. The applicant is now offering the design that is supported by both parish councils and is the preference of the immediate neighbour and which is the design that was sought by members during their earlier debate. I would sincerely hope that the integrity of the planning system is maintained by this application now being approved. 15 seconds I'm to answer. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, David, um, have any of the members got a question for Mr. Bateman? No, Chairman. No. Well, uh, thank you very much for attending, Mr. Bateman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with that, we go on to the divisional member, uh, Councillor Joyce Duffin. Thank you very much. Um, this has at this application or a similar this plot has been to this committee before, um, so I won't spend a long time explaining it. 
Um, as you are aware, the existing dwellings there are all terraced and all affordable. Um, this application is very much for um, a totally different little dwelling stuck in the corner of the site. It doesn't fit in well at all with what is already there. Um, I have to also pick up on the agent's comment about the committee last time um, sought by members, he said, to uh, be a bungalow. Uh, that's totally uh, incorrect. I think somebody did comment that a bungalow might be better there than a two story property. But definitely the committee didn't seek to have an application come forward with a bungalow. Um, the any dwelling in that um, crammed little corner, I think, is totally out of keeping with the application. Um, I think it's also important to say um, that a lot has been said about the neighbour, the nearest neighbour, that their preferred option is a bungalow. Well, I think probably if you're giving them the choice of two, the preferred option would be a bungalow. Um, but please be aware that the Chapel, Meso Chapel Meadows Residence Committee are very much against this proposition of uh, another dwelling being crammed into the corner. Um, as we mentioned and talked about quite a lot last time, the parking situation is very tight up there, um, which is why you find that um, there are people parked in the, the turning uh, area. Um, the Chapel, resident, Chapel Meadows residents um, all get on very well and have their own agreement of where everybody parks and it's all quite amicable but it is very tight um, and as um, a, a visitor coming to visit um, it would be very hard to, to find somewhere to park on that little estate um, and there's no um, footpath or anything into the village so it's it's not an ideal location it wouldn't be an ideal location for an elderly person because um, it's very difficult. You you can't walk into the, the village, either Port Street or Port Town from there. Um, but I don't think I need to say too much more um, similar points to the last time it came to committee. I just don't think cramming a property into the corner when you have terraced properties already there, the estate looks a certain way and then, you know, this would be totally, totally different to what's there already. So I, I don't think I have anything else to say unless there are any questions, Jim. Thank you. Um, are, are there any questions of Councillor Duffin? Um, David? Yes, Chairman. Sure. I mean, Councillor Nicholas? Yeah, Councillor Nicholas first. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Duffin, for that. Um, just to clarify, because um, I, I recall this application on a number of occasions. Um, just to clarify, this green area at the moment, is that used by children and, and residents as a green area? Um, because I would assume um, that part of the um, permissions for the site generally in the beginning was for that to be kept as a green area? No, those, those areas weren't um, because it's quite an odd shaped site and the way the dwellings are. So there is a little play area in the middle, which is the area of open space. Um, originally, and it's got a very long history, the site, but originally the little bits of green um, land were offered to the residents um, to individually purchase. Um, and I know that some people were looking to take that up, but I think it kind of fell down a bit with um, um, lawyers and things once that, you know, they started to do it. But no, it's not the open space part of the land, of the estate. But is it used as that by the kids um, or whatever? I, you know, I think the, the whole area is um, fairly a small <coughs> estate, really. So um, I'm sure that it is sort of, you know, the whole area is sort of open for the residents. And as I said, they are all quite a friendly little area together. Um, but, you know, it is kind of tucked away in the corner. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would imagine that for children being around there, you wouldn't be able to see them. You'd probably prefer them on the open space area. OK, thanks. Yeah. Uh, David, anybody else on your yep. list? We have Councillor Mike Thomas. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks to Mike Thomas. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, I remember this uh, very well, this particular case application rather. 
Uh, what's your vision, to use that terminology, for that uh, that piece of, of land? What would you like to see happen to it? And although um, you mentioned to Councillor Nicholas that, um, as stated very clearly in the committee update, that the uh, plot 12 were offered the, the land, that was the past. What about the present? Has it been considered to offer that land if if, uh, uh, if the, the whole group as a residence perhaps could take it over? <coughs> Well, um, and I think probably what I should have said to Sue as well was uh, since this application has come in or the previous one for that area it has now been fenced off. So it does look quite ugly and it obviously does stop residents using it now because it's been fenced off. Um, I think, you know, either going back to residents and offering them to take on areas because I think they would like to do that. And as you know yourself, so there's nothing like being told you're going to lose something to make you value it. So I'm sure that if it, you know, if the parcels of land were offered back to the houses again, I'm sure there would be an uptake on that. Mm. Um, I just think it's such an odd area in the corner i don't think it's suitable for a dwelling i think it has to just be part of the space of the estate otherwise you're going to have developers park it, uh, trying to build on every little single triangle of space that's left on on estates uh, but through you mr chair that would seem to be the original intention back in 2012 of the developer that it wasn't seen as a, a viable place for somewhere to build yeah, and that there was obviously conversation with the developers, you know, saying at the time that this is, you know, land now that's available and the implication was definitely that it was never going to be built on. Thank you. Uh, David, have you got any other speakers? Yeah. Yes, um, Councillor Robinson, you, Chairman. Uh, over to you, Richard. Yeah, thank you. A very simple question. Who owns the land? Uh, I guess it's all the the developer is it i don't i don't know i don't no it's just a find it interesting that we're busy trying to make plans of what we should do with somebody else's land and away they go right. i mean with this state who does own the land once the houses are individually sold off i guess it still remains with the owner of the land the developer doesn't it it depends whether it's freehold or leasehold doesn't it really? Right. Um, have you any further questions, David? Uh, no further questions, Jim. No. Right. So um, with, with that, are, are there any uh, questions for officers from anybody on the committee? Yeah. Councillor Code, Chairman. Yeah. Over uh, to you, Graham. Good morning again. Um, I noticed from the uh, reports that we were issued uh, that the previous planning application PA 1902247 which we turned down is now the subject of an appeal. I'd like to ask uh, Mark please uh, what's the ramifications of that uh, as this is the um, current new uh, application? Uh, right, right. Thank you Chairman. Yeah on page 69 paragraph one it's set out in the report that it is at um, at an appeal. Obviously, this is a different um, design. It was refused uh, last time for the reasons uh, indicated in paragraph one. Right. OK, uh, are there any other questions, uh, David? Uh, uh, no, Chairman. No. So um, any of the officers want to make any comments or ask any questions? I just want to clarify uh, the parish council's comments regarding the um, irregularities in terms of officers. I think the officers have been um, consistent in that we did support the two story development and we've always resisted the single story development. I appreciate it's contrary to what their views are, but we have been consistent in our approach. Yeah, right, thank you. So with that, we'll go into committee. So if somebody would like to start <coughs> the debate, uh, uh, first speaker, Councillor Mark, Mark Kazmarek. Yeah, uh, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, yeah, we, we've got a very strong uh, reason for refusal by our planning officer, which um, I will fully support. Uh, I was involved um, in the planning decision when this was first granted, and, uh, and it was granted for affordable housing. It's a rural exception site, and the layout 
gave those first time buyers because most of them were um, affordable um, sales and, um, <clears throat> and shared ownership schemes. But it, it showed the estate being well laid out with good open space. Uh, and this is what the residents bought into. And, and what we didn't want happening there was the whole estate being crammed in. You, you shouldn't have that cramped appeal. And I and think hey, we should be building estates. They should have some green spaces. There should be some wildlife areas as well. So I would fully support, support the officer's recommendation and move the recommendation as laid out on page 77. Yes, that's a move. Is there a seconder for that? Yeah. Councillor Thomas. Yeah, Councillor Thomas. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, right. Uh, over to David. Next on your list is. Oh, Councillor Thomas did want to speak. Did you no, no, speak no, yeah. uh, okay, yeah. Councillor Mike Thomas. Uh, no further comment at all said by Councillor Mark Kazmarek. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Next speaker, uh, David. Councillor Councillor Sue Nicholas. Uh, over to you, Sue. Thank you. Yeah, Mike got in before me, but yes, no, I would um, fully support the uh, recommendation for refusal. Yeah, thank you. Uh, David? Uh, Councillor Biggs? Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, again, I fully support um, Councillor Kasmarek said and Councillor Duffin. Um, when our officer says it's contrived, uh, uh, it's, it absolutely is. And we do have a broader responsibility to be consistent in our design and uh, layout across Cornwall as a, as a local authority. So um, I fully support the officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David? Uh, none. None. They've all gone. Uh, no, none then, uh, Richard, was your hand up or were you just taking it down? <laughs> yeah, I, I had my hand up. Um, and I mean, it's just like, I don't know that we do uh, necess should necessarily be looking for this consistency um, through everything. Um, you know, you've got a single story build now that would be absolutely ideal for um, an uh, elderly couple, perhaps. Um, um, I don't believe for a second that uh, looking at this from the pictures that I'm looking at, it looks to me like there's, there's, a, there's actually more land available than on the plots for each of the um, it, the terrace houses there, which would be much more cramped. There's a good garden. You've got a solution to the parking <coughs> problem with people simply ignoring the fact that that's a turning point um, and, um, and and parking it up anyway. Um, I think this this should go forward, especially since, given the history of it, where we can't seem to make our mind up whether it's appropriate to be two story or one story. Um, I, I would certainly, um, if anyone were to propose it, put it later, I, I would be supporting that. Um, I'd certainly not be supporting um, 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 the recommendation by the officer, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, any other speakers, David? No, Chairman. No. Okay, so I'll, I'll put it to the vote. The vote, what you'd be voting for would be refusal as uh, proposed by Councillor Kazmarek and seconded by Councillor Mike Thomas. And with, with a, um, well, it wouldn't be uh, any conditions be for refusal. Uh, you've got the reasons in the report. So um, it will go over to Angela for the roll call again, if you'd like to take that. Angela, please. OK, Chairman. Councillor Bastin. Four. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Against. Councillor Dauphin. I don't think I get a vote, do no, I? No, oh, no, you don't. That's the division number. Yeah, pick that one up. Councillor Eakinsmith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Ketchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. Okay, if you bear with me, I'll count up. Um, the application has been refused by 11 votes in favour and two against. Uh, thank you. So we've gone to item five. That's any other business that the chairman considers to be of urgency. I'm pleased to say that there is none. So I'd just like to thank everybody for their attendance, speakers, committee members, and for the, all the hard work put in by the officers. And uh, hope you have a good afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.
Thank you, Chairman. 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 Thank